Hey everyone, and welcome. Today, we're tackling a leap code problem that looks like a tricky game theory puzzle. It's called Val's Game in a String. We'll break down the rules, find the hidden simplicity, and walk through the solution step by step. Let's get started. Okay, so let's understand the basic setup. It's a two-player game with Alice and Bob. They start with a string, and on each turn, a player chooses a piece of that string, a substring, and removes it. The key thing to remember is that Alice is always the one who starts. Now for the crucial rules that make this game interesting. Alice isn't allowed to remove just any substring. Her choice must contain an odd number of vowels. One, three, five, and so on. Bob, on the other hand, must choose a substring with an even number of vowels. That could be zero, two, four, etc. And just like many turn-based games, if it's your turn and you have no legal moves, you lose. Our job is to act as the referee before the game even starts. Given the initial string, we have to predict the winner. Specifically, we need to figure out if Alice has a winning strategy right from the beginning. We'll return true if she can force a win, and false if she can't. Let's walk through an example. Imagine the string is leet coder. First, let's count the vowels. We have E, E, O, and another E. That's four vowels in total. Now you might think, wait, four is an even number, but Alice needs to make an odd move. But remember, she doesn't have to take the entire string. She just needs to find one small piece that fits her rule. So looking at leet coder, what could Alice do? She could choose to remove just the substring leet toe. Let's count the vowels in that piece. There's an E, another E, and an O. That's three vowels. Three is an odd number. So this is a perfectly legal move for her. She makes the move, and the string becomes de. Now it's Bob's turn. The most important thing here is that Alice was able to make a move at all. This leads us to the big aha moment of this problem. Since both players are playing optimally, the game isn't really about a long back and forth battle. It all comes down to the very first turn. Can Alice make a legal move? If the answer is yes, it turns out she can always control the game to a win. If she's stuck on her first turn, she loses immediately. So let's think about what Alice needs. She just has to find any substring with an odd vowel count. What's the simplest, smallest odd number we can think of? It's one. If Alice can find any substring, anywhere, that contains exactly one vowel, she has a valid move. So can she always do that? Well, yes, as long as there is at least one vowel somewhere in the original string, Alice can always make a move. For example, if the string is programming, she can see the Aya Thi Mengi, Kretchens, she could just take the substring from the start up to Aya Thi Mengi, Torias Thi Mengi, and including that Aya Thi Mengi. That piece program has exactly one vowel, it's an odd number, so it's a perfect move for her. This means there's only one way for Alice to lose. What if the string has zero vowels to begin with? Something like rhythm. No matter what substring she tries to take, the number of vowels in it will be zero. And zero is an even number. This means she can't make a move that satisfies her odd number of vowels rule. She's stuck on her very first turn, so she loses. And that's the whole solution. The entire game with all its rules just boils down to this one simple check. We don't need to simulate turns or think about Bob's strategy. All that matters is whether the string contains at least one vowel from the set. A, E, I, O, U, Tor. If it does, Alice wins. If it doesn't, Alice loses. The code to implement this logic is beautifully short and clean. We just check if any character inside our string is a vowel. In Python, the any function combined with a generator expression does this perfectly. It will stop and return true as soon as it finds the first vowel, which is very efficient. So how efficient is this? The time complexity is big O of n, where n is the length of the string. This is because in the worst case scenario, a string with no vowels, we have to check every single character. For space, we aren't creating any new lists or data structures that depend on the input size, so the space complexity is big O of 1, or constant. It's a very fast and efficient solution. So to wrap things up, what did we learn? First, the problems that look like complex games can often be solved by finding one simple, core rule. Second, for optimal play games, always analyze what it takes for the first player to simply make a move. Here the entire winning strategy for Alice was just based on her ability to find at least one vowel anywhere in the string. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more LeetCode easy, medium or hard problems, 
or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.